If Hollywood gets tired of T-Rex, Triceratops, Velociraptor, Smilodon, Mammoths, and hopefully Megalodon, there are plenty of other prehistoric animals out there for Hollywood to use. Here are 25 prehistoric animals that deserve the big screen treatment. Number 25, Giant Hyenas. Most people today love hyenas, including myself, and why wouldn't they? They are magnificent looking animals with a powerful bite of 1100 PSI. They have been in pop culture media like the Jungle Book, the Lion King, and they are known for their laughing sound. But in the Cenozoic era, there was a few giant hyena species like the cave hyena and Peggy Crocuda. But one of the largest hyenas is Dano Crocuda, a prehistoric hyena that was big as a grizzly bear. It was top predator of its time rather than a scavenger like their modern day relatives. Remember I said that a hyena's bite is 1100 PSI? Imagine the bite from this guy. It would be devastating. But seriously, don't you think that a giant hyena will fit perfectly for a good horror flick? Number 24. Host Eagle. Eagles and other birds of prey rarely attack people. But during the end of the Ice Age, there was one bird that often preyed on early humans. Host Eagle was a giant bird of prey from New Zealand that had a wingspan up to 2.6 meters. But some say it was possible that they had a 3 meter wingspan. While Host Eagle was known for preying on humans, but humans were kind of like a sore desperation meal. They actually preyed on the giant moa with their 1.93 to 2.42 inch talons. Now that bird of prey with its size, ferocity, and reputation should get some recognition on the big screen. Maybe in a fantasy or horror film. What do you think? Number 23. The Real King Kong. Okay. Gigantopithecus is well known in, in pop culture, but only one true appearance in the film industry was James Favreau's 2016 The Jungle Book, a very good movie might I add, where it was King Louie voiced by actor Christopher Walken. But other than that, Gigantopithecus hasn't made any appearance in film before or after The Jungle Book, although it is in the video game Ark Survival Evolve, but don't you think that this giant ape deserves more attention on the big screen? Even though it's nowhere near the size of a T-Rex or building? Depending which version of King Kong you prefer. Number 22. Killer Baboons. This is kinda a follow up from the last entry. Dicanopithecus might be the largest ape, but the largest monkey is called Dinopithecus, a baboon that was big as a man. Today. Baboons are known as aggressive primates. Because of this, they have appeared in some B-rated movies. So imagine the aggression with this giant monkey. Plus, the size of those canines would probably scare anyone. You all remember that one scene in Tarzan where he saved Jane from that huge baboon troop? Imagine if they were Dinopithecus instead. Now that would have been a charge for Tarzan. But in all fairness, Dinopithecus should get some attention on the big screen, or anything in pop culture. What do you think? Number 21. Dunkel Osseus. Before sharks ruled the seas, there was a fish that ruled the waters before. Dunkel Osseus was a Devonian ocean master of its time. It belonged to an extinct group called the Placoderms, and it was large as a school bus. Most of its body was covered in very thick armor, plus, rather than having teeth, Dunkel Osseus had four razor sharpened bones that were able to bite through armored prey and was able to open its jaws in 20 milliseconds and close them in 50 to 60 milliseconds. Now that's impressive. Dunkel Osseus has appeared in television shows and video games, but when does it get its big screen treatment? I mean, look at it. Dunkel Osseus has a scary and awesome appearance. It would be perfect for any sci fi or horror film. Number 20, the Gorgonopsids. Now despite their appearance, the Gorgonopsids are really close relatives of modern mammals. They do have 
mammalian characteristics like in the face and the teeth. The biggest Gorgonopsid is Innostrancevia, which was named after Russian bio geologist Alexandre Elstrancevia. You know, when you think about it, the Gorgonopsid does look like he was made up by a mad scientist, which makes it perfect for sci fi films. Someone needs to show Hollywood the synopsis. Number 19, Mega Piranha. Now, piranhas are known for their notorious fiend frenzy. They have been used in films like the James Bond film, You Only Live Twice, as Blofeld's death trap. But can you imagine if Mega Piranha was only discovered 44 years ago, then these would have been perfect for Blofeld. Not surprisingly, Mega Piranha fossils have been found near the Amazon basin, but by only a jawbone, which is said to be 28 inches long. Well, it might be truly for James Bond, but Mega Piranha could still have a chance on the big screen, if anyone's interested out there. Number 18, a fantasy made real. Komodo dragons are known for their intimidating appearance and daily bite, but they had an ancestor that was way bigger. Megalania was a huge monitor lizard that roamed Australia during the Ice Age. Now, if Megalania had a deadly venomous bite like his modern day relatives, then its prey would be in big trouble. This Komodo dragon has been known since 1859. That was 50 years before T-Rex was discovered and it still hasn't made its big screen de debut. Seriously, wouldn't it be nice to see Megalania on the big screen? Maybe in a horror or a thrill film? Perhaps? perhaps? Number 17, the Ceratopsians. On the big screen today, Triceratops is the most famous Ceratopsian ever to be seen. But what about his other relatives? Don't they deserve some love too? Well, let's look at them. There's Styracosaurus, a Ceratopsian that is well known for its unique looking horned frill and single horn. There's also Diablo Ceratops, a Ceratopsian from Utah that has two curved horns on the top of his, of his frill and two horns above his eyebrows. There's also Aeneasaurus, a Ceratopsian unique for its curved nasal horn and two horns sticking out on the top of the frill. There's also Medusa Ceratops, it is known for cur its curved horns sticking out, out of its frill, which resembles the famous Gorgon Medusa from Greek mythology. Finally, there's Pachyrhinosaurus, for lacking a nasal horn and having a bony growth and having a sort of crazy horns on its frill. While Pachyrhinosaurus did appear in the 2013 reboot of Walking of Dinosaurs. But let's be honest, I'm pretty sure most of us want us to forget about that film. So what do you think about these choices? Do, do they deserve the big screen treatment? Number 16, Water for Bizarre Elephants. Today, woolly mammoths are the most well-known prehistoric pachyderm to see on the big screen. But like a triceratop, let's look at the other relatives and see if they deserve some love. You have the Gumphotherium or the Gumphotheres, a group of prehistoric elephants well known for its bizarre, shovel-like lower jaws, which kind of looks otherworldly. There's Dinotherium, one of the biggest land mammals to ever live, also known for its two tusks on the lower jaw. Plus, the name means terrible beast. Finally, there's Stegotrebelodon, an elephant with four tusks two on the upper jaw and two on the lower jaw. If you think about it, Stegotrebelodon is a real life oliphant from the Lord of the Rings. So do you think these pachyderms deserve some attention on the big screen? Number 15, Dow Bears. You know what's missing in movies set around the Ice Age? Giant Bears. While giant bears had appeared in kids movies like The Fox and the Hound and Balto, but you never actually see giant bears on a live-action live movie. There's not even bears in the Ice Age franchise. 
So let's look at prehistoric bears that deserve some attention. There's the cave bear, the most famous prehistoric bear, but keep in mind it's still a herbivore despite its size and appearance, but it still deserves some attention. But there's also Arctoctus, aka the short faced bear, and Arctothelium, the South American short faced bear, and the biggest land mammalian carnivore to ever live. Plus, there's Aguilotherium, a bear that was from Africa. It was also one of the largest bears in history. What do you think? Should these bears deserve some attention too? Number 14. Wait, there's more than one? Velociraptor is perhaps the most well known raptor on the planet, but most of us know that Velociraptors didn't look anything like they did in Jurassic Park. They had a much more narrow jaw and they were the size of a turkey. So let's look at some other raptors that deserve more attention on the big screen. Well, Deinonychus is well known. It really doesn't get that much attention. In fact, Deinonychus was the inspiration for the raptors on Jurassic Park. So in a way, they got their credit robbed from underneath them. There's also two giant raptors, the Utah Raptor and the Dakota Raptor named after their respective states where they were found in, but they lived in two different time periods where Utah Raptor lived near Cretaceous and the Cold Raptor lived in late Cretaceous. While Utah Raptor is well known, he still hasn't gotten any attention on the big screen either way. There's also a unique raptor called Sinroar Ithosaurus. While it does have common features of the raptors, Sinornithosaurus does have one thing working for him. Some paleontologists think that it might have carried venom like a Gila monster. Even though it's up for debate, film directors and producers should use this dinosaur for movies like the other ones. What do you think? Number 13. Who didn't let the dogs out? Dire wolves are the most well known prehistoric canine, probably because they looked similar to modern day wolves, but there are three prehistoric dogs that deserve equal attention. They are Aurodon, Borophagus, and Epicyon. These dogs belong to a group called Borophagidin, also known as bone crushing dogs or hyena dogs. Now even though these dogs are said to be scavengers, just by looking at their appearance, these dogs should get a little TLC. What do you think? Number 12. The Real Rodan. Unused Pterosaurs. Part 1. Pterosaurs or pterodactyls or pterodons are perhaps the most well-known flying reptiles on the planet. But what about their bigger relatives like Ketocolis and Hetzicopteryx? These two pterosaurs were about the size of a giraffe. They could have looked one in the eye. You would have figured that giant pterosaurs would be featured in Jurassic Park movies, but strangely, there hasn't. While I love Rodan as much as the next kaiju fan, I would love to see either Ketoquanus or Hetic Opteryx on the big screen, wouldn't you? Number 11, Andrusarchus. This is the largest mammalian carnivore that ever lived, but it's only known by its 32 inch skull, so it doesn't get that much attention, sadly. But remember this, Megalodon was first discovered by a tooth, and he got a lot of attention unfortunately. Titanoboa was first discovered by a vertebrate, so he got a lot of attention too. So if Andrusarchus is only discovered by a skull, then by that right, Andrusarchus should get some attention too. We need to see a giant predatory mammal on the big screen, wouldn't you agree? Number 10. Bizarre Flyers Unused Pterosaurs Part 2 Previously I mentioned giant pterosaurs. Now let's look at those with the odd crest. First off, there's Tapijara, a early Cretaceous pterosaur from Brazil, with a large brown crest which males are said to have only. There's also Pterodostro, another South American pterosaur with bristle-like teeth which often are used 
to catch and eat plankton. There is also Xenuopterus, a pterosaur with a small crisp and wicked sharp teeth. There is also Nyctosaurus, a small pterosaur with a huge Y-shaped crisp. Even though Nyctosaurus was featured in the Disney Picture film, The Good Dinosaur, it still deserves some attention along with the others. What do you think? Number 9. Land Crocs Before crocodiles came to the picture, they had ancestors that ruled the land before the dinosaurs came, came along. They were called Thoraisukians, huge reptiles that dominated the planet throughout the Triassic. So let's look at them. There's Postosuchus, the most well-known Raisukian thanks to the real Walking with Dinosaurs documentary. There's also Fossilosuchus and Sarosuchus, two of the largest Raisukians on the planet. And there's also Arizonosaurus, a Raisukian with a sail on its back, kind of like the Amitradon. Don't you think that these crocs should be in a future Jurassic Park film or horror film? What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. Number 8. Mapusaurus. This South American theropod is a close relative of Giganotosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus. But unlike his relatives, Mapusaurus was known for hunting in packs, and these dinosaurs were almost big as T Rex. Can you imagine being chased by a pack of giant carnivorous dinosaurs? It would make a good thriller film. What do you think? Would a giant pack? of Mapusaurus be good for the big screen? Number 7. Texas Buzzsaw Massacre While well, technically a shark, Halicoprion is more closely related to the redfish. Its bizarre and yet frightful appearance shouldn't give this shark appearance on the big screen even though Halicoprion only ate boneless prey. But when has Hollywood ever been scientific accurate on prehistoric creatures? In my opinion, the buzzsaw killer deserves some attention. Wouldn't you agree? Number 6. The Plyosaurus. Well, there's one famous Plyosaur that everyone knows, and that's Lyoprotodon. But as most of us know, Lyoprotodon wasn't the 49 foot long monster that is shown in Walking with Dinosaurs. In fact, Lyoprotodon was only 21 feet long. Still big, but not big enough. But Lyoprotodon did have bigger cousins. Three of them are Plyosaurus Kunkunae, aka Praetorix, Brachalcinius, and Kronosaurus. Praetorix was 30 to 36 feet long, Brachalcinius was 30 feet long, and Kronosaurus was 27 to 30 feet long. Out of all the three, Praetorix has the strongest spike force. It even outbites T Rex by four times. There is a book about Kronosaurus called Kronos Rising, and the franchise is selling a lot of copies to this day. So who knows? Maybe Kronos might get a film in the future. Number 5. Dan Crocs. After the 1999 film Lake Pass was released, you figure that they'd be making more movies about Dan Crocs. But strangely, there's not. If Hollywood is interested in making a film about Dan Crocs, here are three Crocs that can fit the bill. Sarcosuchus, aka the Super Croc, Phanosuchus, and Purusaurus. While debating on whether Sarcosuchus or Purusaurus was bigger, both can reach around 30 to 35 feet long, and Dinosuchus was about 30 to 36 feet long. Plus, Purusaurus had one of the strongest bites out of any croc today. There's also a giant saltwater crocodile called Machismosaurus. It was 20 feet long and ruled the prehistoric European and African seas from the late Jurassic to the early Cretaceous. Movies need more giant crocodiles, don't you agree? Number 4. A real Frankenstein. While well, neither bear nor dog, Amphicyon was still a huge predator about the size of an African lion. With the head of a dog and the body of a bear and the tail of a lion, Amphicyon really does look like a mad scientist experiment gone wrong. Which again would be perfect for a horror, thriller, fantasy, or sci fi film. This animal was smart, powerful, and dangerous. Shouldn't the bear dog get some time to shine? Huh? Don't. Is anyone that agrees out there? Number 3. Get the facts straight. While Smilodon is often called the saber-toothed tiger, it's not even a close relative of a tiger. In fact, Smilodon's closest relative is a clown leopard. But 
There is a prehistoric cat that can take the title, and that cat is called Malcarildus. It lived a few million years before Spinaldon, and it kind of looks like more than a tiger than Spinaldon does, and it's said to be even bigger than Spinaldon. So maybe it's Malcarildus who belongs on the big screen, and not Spinaldon. What do you think? Number two, terror birds. While these birds did make an appearance on the 2008 film, 10,000 BC, they haven't made any further appearance on the big screen since. But they do deserve some screen time. There are three te terror birds that Hollywood can use. They are Titanus, Kalekin, and Brontornis. Out of all of the, the birds, Kalekin is the tallest. Even though terror birds never made any contact with early men like in 10,000 BC, it'd be nice to see the birds on the big screen again, wouldn't you say? Now before I reveal the number one prehistoric animal, here are some honorable mentions. While the woolly mammoth is the most well-known prehistoric mammal, it certainly wasn't the biggest. In fact, one of the biggest land mammals was called Paraceratherium, which was 15 feet tall. This mammal is the most well-known creature in the world of scientists, paleontologists, and enthusiasts, but not in Hollywood. Giganotosaurus was one of the first theropods to be discovered to be bigger than T-Rex. At the time of the discovery, it shocked the world because everyone thought that T-Rex was the biggest carnivore. And yet, Giganotosaurus has hardly appeared in any movies. Why is that? Earlier, I did call the Rostutians land crocs, but in Ice Age Australia, there was an actual giant land croc that existed. Quincana was a 20 foot long terrestrial croc that competed with Megalania. They actually date back to the Augustine epic, but again, a land croc would be nice to see on the big screen. Leviathan was a huge prehistoric whale that was named after the biblical monster, which roamed the prehistoric Peruvian seas at the time. But with the popularity of Megalodon, Leviathan is left in the dark. So, do you think that these four deserve some time on the big screen? Number 1. Acrocansosaurus this huge predator lived 57 million years in America before T-Rex came along. It had an impressive range from Wyoming, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, and Maryland. Well, Agrocanthosaurus was half the size and lacked a powerful bite like T-Rex, it did have the tenacity to tackle prey that was bigger than him. Hey, it lived around sore at the time. So, it could have taken down prey that weighed up to 30 tons. Talk about no guts, no glory. Do you think Acrocanthosaurus deserves some time on the big screen?